the correct, correct pronunciation is Dahlia. Once and for all, because the gentleman's name who discovered them was named Dahl. So there you go. Uh, so <clears throat> we're just going to look at some of these uh, uh, Dahlias that we overwintered. And so these are some of the ones that we have. There's uh, some sort of different types and colors. But I actually know what these are, which color they are. You can still see the pot shape on that one that came out of a pot. Uh, but these are all really nice uh, double pinks. Uh, this larger one here is, is one of the large double pink ones. And it's sort of pink and blushy white a little bit. And then uh, the smaller one is the one that we had last year. I don't know if you saw the video on uh, my favorite cut flowers. And uh, this was one of them. And I believe it was called Wizard of Oz, which was the variety of, uh, of Dahlia that it is. So uh, these plants, again, I, I always mention about overwintering plants. The key is, is making sure the roots are thoroughly dried out and not moist. If you have moisture on them, they're going to rot in storage for sure. And, uh, you know, in warmer climates, I'm sure in tropical climates, they're able to leave these in year round outside. But uh, in the temperate climates here in Canada, we do have to bring these in for the winter. They can't handle any kind of frost. So really important. Uh, but uh, on, in this case, uh, these, these roots have been dried thoroughly. And uh, sometimes we'll store them in just a cardboard box literally just in a box with no covering uh, depending on the conditions that they're being stored sometimes we'll put them in dry peat moss and so fill the box with put the roots in fill the box with dry peat moss or dry potting soil and that that can really help to keep the roots in good shape over winter they do shrivel up a little bit over winter like this one but that's okay that's how they come through so one of the keys to to getting these things to, to grow is that usually in the springtime you do uh, you do divide them a certain amount. I don't have to. I could just put that whole thing into a into a pot and away it would go. And it's going to shoot from the top of these the stems. So you get the the tuber here, and then this slender stem that's up here, and where it attaches to this the woody part. That's the key part that you have to have in order to get this thing to successfully grow. And so that's where you start. If you're gonna, like if I'm gonna divide them, I get right into this part and I'll just cut this off, but I'm gonna be fairly careful to get in there and separate the, the tuber and try to get in here, even if you pull it away like this, I'm sort of breaking it like that. That way I'm keeping that sort of a, sort of like a little swollen up area there around the top. And this is where the shoots come from. This is what they call, this is where the eyes are going to form. So this is where the shoots will come from. So, so that makes a really nice uh, tuber there that can be planted. So I'm just going to divide this one into, I'm just going to take the three biggest ones off of this one. And so I'm just going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cut it as close as I can. So then I get the, that little stub on the top. And uh, here's another one here. So, and I can see how it's sort of, it's trying to separate. I can see it separating, it's like a split in here. So that can be just sort of broken away. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get in here and just snip it with my pruners. Speed up the process a little bit. There we go. And so this may grow, but I'm not, I'm not overly interested in that, but I'm, I want this part. So hopefully this is all gonna grow out, which it should very nicely. I'm just gonna snip off some of this broken part. And away we go. And uh, so that's that for that one. And uh, I'll do one more off of this. I just have four pots here prepared. And this one is same idea. We're just gonna try to get in. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more woody. And you can see this swollen area here around the base of these stems. This is all wood that's gonna produce buds and eyes. So all that will, so then these tubers down below, that's why on that, the other one was skinny. So we had to really try to get a piece of this. But now what we can do is we can actually chop right through this and divide it into bigger chunks. 
and that's all I have to do there. And you can see on the inside, you can sort of see there's some living tissue that's alive and some dead tissue, which is typical uh, of the dahlias after storage. So that, you know, that makes it really nice. You know, if I want to get something big, that's the one I want to use right away out of the gate. But I just want to get one more small one out of this. And, uh, and I'll probably put these into bigger pots likely. So what I might do is I might just keep those two for bigger pots. And I've got this real scrawny one here. But it's actually, I'm sure it's going to be a really good one. So... I'm just going to see if I can... I'm just going to break that off. And I'm going to cut these off. Like that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all three of these into the same pot. And the reason is that I'm not 100% sure these are going to be alive. They look like they could be. So I'm just going to put all three of those into one pot for now. And then if they do start to grow, then um, I can even divide them up later. So as you can see, these pots, I do put about one third full and I use my poorest sort of backup soil in the bottom. So that is just recycled soil in the bottom from other planters that I had last year. And I just stand these things uh, upright. So we got to pay attention to which end is up and just sort of stand them upright in the soil in the bottom. And then we're just going to take our potting soil and this is pre-moistened so we put the dry soil in here and then we put some water in it and moisten it up so it's really nice and easy ready to go so we put the new soil on the top and then i just pull the root up a little bit so it's not too far down in the bottom and i don't have to fill this pot all the way full and the reason is is that uh i want to i'm trying to conserve soil i don't want to just use soil where it's not needed. I just need to get these plants started. So I just put the tip of the uh, the, the dahlia just near the, the top of the soil like that and that's basically good to go. So we'll just repeat that process again. So we have the, the tuber, we're just going to push it in and we're going to get the top of the stem approximately near the top of the soil like so. We can take out some soil, we're going to make sure that's visible. I also like to see this so that I can uh, I can check it to see if it's going to be shooting. So pretty easy and uh, I sort of stand them up like that in the middle, put the soil in and just gonna bring that to the middle like so. And there it is. Just lightly, t you know, you don't pack it too hard. Remember that roots of plants breathe oxygen, so you don't want to be overpacking the soil in there. Just, just, just light packing. I usually let the water pack it, so when I put the, when I water it, it's good to go. Okay, so and then this last one, this one has a triplet. It's got the three, so we're just going to fill that with soil. And then we're going to reach down and adjust the bulbs so that they're standing upright. Tubers, I mean. There's another one is here somewhere. is I'm just gonna put that like this push it in just a little bit there we go let's see hopefully that will grow just like that okay so that's uh that's those dahlias now these are dahlias that we purchased from the local garden center and i'm just opening these up and you can see that these ones are stored in peat moss and you can see that they're much more plump and much happier looking these will just grow right away they're not going to wait too too long i noticed that the crown on this is a little mushy so it might be a little rotted and that could be that they've got a little bit too much uh, moisture in their soil in here but they still should be okay Here's another one. I'm just going to open these up just so that you can all see what they look like. And this one's got a whole bunch of ones in it. And some of them are damaged a little bit. 
So I could take these off and grow them individually, and that would give me another plant. So these are double white. You can see the picture of that one. Florel looks like it is what it's called. So it's a nice, nice variety. And so those are ready to go. And we just do the exact same procedure there. And this is one of the uh, double yellows. It's a nice one. So this one has a smaller bloom. So they call them ball dahlias. Dahlias. You can call them whatever you want. Just don't call them late for dinner, right? Um, so, yeah. I'll open this one just so I can see this root. I'm going to let a little bit of air in there too because we're going to be potting these up. And sometimes if they sit in these bags for too long, they start to rot a bit. But you can see that some of these have fallen off and they're already starting to grow roots. So that's good to go there. We could actually put, we should put that in a separate pot, like in a four inch or six inch pot. And we can grow, multiply these a little bit. But that's your main cluster right there. It really just depends on how many dahlias you think you need because you can make a lot of them but next year we'll have the same scenario where we'll have great big ones like this that'll be really cool ready to go so we're going to pop these into this is what's called a one gallon pot these are two gallon pots we also have five gallon pots so we're gonna we're gonna have an assortment of sizes and we, we have to get them going early up here. We need to start these in March. Uh, it was March 20th today, so that's good timing for us. Uh, we could have done it, uh, we could have put them together about 10 days ago. That would have been, that would have been nice. Get them a little bit earlier. Uh, because these really don't get blooming till August, right? So if we want to get them blooming earlier, then we need to plant them earlier and get them up and growing. But that means these guys can't have any frost, so they have to be kept in the house where they're warm so all right so the the dahlia uh society uh they recommend that they that uh, in the fall when you take these things out and you're getting ready for winterization that you do your divisions and you cut them down into those individual uh tubers with the stem and then they want you to clean it really nice so wash it and make sure it's there's not any soil or anything on it and then thoroughly dry it so it's completely bone dry on the outside of the, of the tuber. And then they'll take that and they recommend rolling it up in some kitchen wrap. And that seals the tuber so that it can't lose any moisture over the winter. And then those can be stacked and labeled if you like. And then put into a, like even like a Tupperware container or a, uh, any type of a, of a, of a container that's going to be dry and you can place that into a cool location. Again, I mentioned mine, I overwintered at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. They prefer to be about 60 degrees. So that'd be about 15 degrees Celsius, somewhere in that range. Um, but uh, that's the best, that's what the best way to do it. I sometimes, I don't take that much care. And then what happens is they come out a little shriveled because they desiccate over the winter a bit. So these are ones that I overwintered and I didn't give them much attention, but they're still good and they're, they're gonna grow. And these are the ones that came out of the fresh package that are nice and plump. And so this is actually is a little bit nicer finished product. And these are stored uh, from the suppliers in this sort of a, a peat moss and sawdust mixture. That's how they do it. Uh, dry peat moss always has about 25% humidity in it. So it's uh, it's kind of a, a perfect environment for overwintering. It's not so dry that it's completely desiccated dry. So anyway, I guess that's it for today. Thanks again for tuning in to GrowCoach.com.